All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all. This is an early broadcast just to share some comments and news with you. Uh, feel free to invite your friends and let us uh, have some talk. Uh, you know, the news about uh, Israel is all over, and we heard many of European leaders who I believe strongly they are potatoes and they are being a hypocrite and. Uh, they are trying to, you know, they have a lot of business with the Middle Eastern countries and, uh, you know, they are in competition of who is going to be more hypocrite. So we heard that many European leaders, they, uh, like, they did not accept what Trump he did as if we care. And as if Trump he did or not will change anything. I mean, Jerusalem is in the hand of the Israeli. You like it, you don't like it. And if you don't like it, let us see what you can do. The French president, the scumbag, the minister of England, the scumbag, the counselor of Germany, a bunch of false scam. And every one of them knows that this is the capital of Israel. It was for thousands of years, and it is built by the Jews. The hypocrite, the scam, they have no shame. However, do we even care? We don't. You will move your embassy to Jerusalem sooner or later. Actually, this is remind me that one day the same scumbag is the same ones who rejected the existence of the state of Israel. Why? because they don't want Israel to be exist. They are people who want to have more, uh, you know, having, having a smart, advanced state in the Middle East is not a good thing for many of those scam, because that mean, uh, you know, there is, a, there is a smart nation there who they are going to establish a competition, and Israel right now is actually in competition with everything. Technology, space, missiles, defense, machines, computer, chips, electronic. So they wanted only a market of a stupid people who they buy, and if they sell, they sell oil. Those Arab, they will never accomplish anything, and all of us, we know it. But having an Israeli state is something risky to many, many organizations. Who they are trying to control the business of the world, computer business, etc. So the existence of Israel actually changed a lot of things. And for those who do not know, you can go and search right now and you will see how much heavily Israel is involved in technology. Actually, for those who do not know, the first scientist who uh, made the nuke for USA they were Jewish. So Jewish, there is no question, they are very smart people, and they have a very huge number of them who have the prize of science. And you need to ask yourself a very simple question. How come a small nation can earn such a number of prizes when they are just a small number of groups? It's like saying, we have 10 Jewish in a school, and then three of the first 10 student or genius in the school they are Jews that's really scary that's mean those people are really smart now it doesn't mean that everyone is a Jew automatically he is smart there's a lot of dumb ones there but generally speaking the Jews are very smart people and you will see the jealousy of the Jews all over the world including Europe it's not an exception the Jews are rich you go and search right now about articles. You will see how many articles are written about how the Jews control the world. You know, I say to those people who say that, good for them if this is a true. I mean, why you don't control the world yourself? Try it. If you can, just do it. But obviously you cannot. So you are jealous. So this is what happened around us, you know. There is people who they are jealous. And because of their jealousy, you know, 
they try to find reasons to to make you hate the Jews the Jews they are controlling the, of the bank system they are the one who own visa they are the one who own good for them I mean this is proving them wrong or proving them to be smart I'm proving you to be donkey if this is true who is who is holding you to control the business I mean how they don't how come they don't complain and say Bill Gates is controlling the computers of the world well he is not a Jew ah but when there is some rich Jews we have to complain because they are Jews they are minority they can discriminate them and we can spit at them right so you know we can say whatever about the Jews I mean they are but they will not dare to say something about the Muslims I mean the Jews are what they can do same time all of us we know that there is many of the Jews who they are rich they are not really Jews they are atheists like I heard once someone saying to me that George Soros is a Jew this guy he hate Israel go and see what he do he sponsored the Muslims everywhere and he hate Trump specifically because he said it clearly he is going to support Israel with all the means he can so and what about the owner of Facebook? He is a Jew, but this guy, he hate Israel. He sponsored the Muslims, and actually Facebook is number one fan of Muslims. And if you post something in Facebook against the Muslims, Facebook is taking it down in a speed of the light. But the Muslims, they post all kinds of articles and videos against Christianity, and they stay there. And go and see how many times the founder of Facebook he praised the Muslims and even the king son of Saudi Arabia he just visited him a few months ago and I wonder why I mean he is a Jew a Muslim visiting a Jew it doesn't make sense but because he simply have nothing to do with the Jews there is people they are born of a Jewish family but how many Jews in America they are truly Jews so uh, stop your stupidity about attacking the Jews and being jealous and if they are what you are they, you, what you are saying I mean good for them good for them small tiny population in the world they were successful and they proved themselves and even all the world is against them from the east to the west even the scumbag leaders of Europe they are against them and yet they are able not only to survive but to flourish and to make Israel what it is today so live with it or die you know what I mean uh, another thing you know when we uh, uh, we have a chat right don't we and when you block somebody from the chat right away he start like supposedly whatever you say he will make you look wrong so I want to show you an example today of some of those kids who come to my chat and make comments I'm just giving you an example you know it's not like uh, about him this guy is a kid I did I did ban him from the chat uh, so he decided not to donate for me five dollars I mean <laughs> he went right away to to uh, battery on and he deleted his donation anyway look at this uh, this is about the video we spoke here about uh, Trump and oil and Jerusalem and the oil is moving from country to country and the, the, the election and how the oil production uh, uh, is not in the hand of the Muslims no more as before they were controlling it so this guy he said to correct some errors Christian Prince suggest oil was going away of the Muslims and this is a changing was going away of the Muslims I never say that I think you have urine in your ears I was saying the Muslims the Muslims or let us say not the Muslims I was saying that all the world thought that 20 years from that time which mean I'm talking 20 years ago that 20 years after the oil will become more expensive because we will have less and less oil but what happened it was the opposite many countries discover more and more oil so look what he said uh, he said so uh, he suggest oil was going away of the Muslims and this is a changing with US uh, and Russia Venezuela Mexico coming in uh, 
in fact they were always in but they used up more oil than they produce countries are moving to solar you know I mean I, I like you I like you but you know I mean you, you must go to kindergarten what solar you idiot solar is not even doing like even 1% of the power which which house is is running by sour by, by, by solar in USA or even in Saudi Arabia what are you talking about which cars are running by solar it's idiot stupid solar is a very expensive wind or you know using the wind or using the Sun is very expensive and actually is not practical because you spend a lot more money from what you think you are saving every few years you have to change the panels and every one year you have to change the batteries and so you know and those uh, batteries by the way they are very costly and not only that they are costly even for recycling because you can't even just uh, throw them in the garbage otherwise you will be in trouble for this is a very toxic material so the solar is is uh, is a solution for isolated area but it is not you know and they have to you have to live very limited with how much you use but all the world today is depending in two kind major source of uh, power or energy it is oil and a nuclear however nuclear is just to produce electricity and oil is number one for transportation airplanes cars you name it uh, and many countries actually even their electricity is running by oil because not all countries can afford to have a nuclear facilities for oil generation and um, oil is the major you know uh, player for uh, 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 you know power now here he said that those countries they use more oil than they produce is that true you are a stupid idiot and you have no idea what are you talking about people they can go right now and search and they will find the following what countries are top producer of and consumer of oil now we know that USA is top consumer of oil for long time but they use always to buy oil however USA is selling oil so it is top consumer yes comparing to other countries because American they have at least every American have a car you know even the poor guy who who is a poor he have a car this is America you know so in America yes we are the biggest consumers for oil but now we are number one producers for oil so uh, uh, you know uh, we are selling our oil all over and we are not in need like you know we, we have a storm let us say uh, two months ago in Texas and that make the oil production slow down and the price of oil go up but still that will not really affect America it's just a temporary storm which made the oil production slow down because a lot of manufacturer or let's say uh, those facilities who produce or filter the oils they were not able to function so they have a few of them working if we go and search more we will find this is this is not uh, like th this is uh, uh, 2017 all right now this is a changing the bend in the situation as I said uh, you know countries they discover more oil they start producing more oil and uh, sometime even Saudi Arabia slow down so USA beats Saudi Arabia etc so based on this article here uh, they are talking about export export Saudi Arabia was number one Russia was number two Iraq was number three Canada is number 39 United Arab Emirates Kuwait Iran Nigeria Angola Norway Venezuela so this guy in his article he mentioned that Venezuela and Mexico they are using more oil than they produce which is very stupid of him as you see Mexico and Venezuela both of them they produce oil and Canada and etc now if we go to different articles we will find more surprising Israel was always a country buying oil depending in oil is bought from other countries for the first time 
Israel not only have a lot more extra oil and gas but they are going to produce and actually already they are producing and selling and they are now signing an agreement this is no this is actually this is an old news actually uh, November 20 uh, just two days ago they signed an agreement with uh, I think uh, Greek and France uh, uh, and Israel to uh, run a pipeline uh, between under the sea all the way to Europe so Israel is, is already uh, uh, a major player in the market of uh, of oil and gas and Europe is going to depend big deal uh, so they can have you so the the the, the, the the benefit of this pipeline that Europe can have an extra secure line for uh, gas sources because the good thing about Israel they can run the pipeline directly from Israel all the way to Europe without going inside the borders of any country so the the, the Russian as an example the Russian pipe is going through many countries and any of those countries they can cut that pipe anytime so Europe is insecure with their energy and depending on Russia only so now having the Israeli building a massive huge one because they are going to this is 2014 you know this is in all the news so but you can search for the one the agreement they they just established just a few days ago so having a secure line going in international water will not give anyone the authority or the access to stop that pipeline from going to Europe so that will give Europe an extra security not only as stable in the price and not only is going to lower the price because now there is more competition and the more competition there is and more production the more price go down so Israel as an example was one of those who buy oil always and gas but now the Israeli they do not need the oil of anyone he mentioned uh, as an example uh, you know uh, Venezuela Actually, Venezuela, Venezuela is suffering badly because their oil prices is, is uh, the oil price became so down, and the whole country depend in the oil production. So a lot of ignorance there. Now we go back to the topic and show you another stupid thing he said. We spoke about the hypocrisy sometime in the West that when when democracy play, and the West always asks for democracy, and we gave an example that when they ask Algeria to go for democracy Algeria the Algerian Islamists they win the election the West and specifically France refuse it look at this guy what he's saying Algeria voted for independent it did not all of a France voted what this guy is talking about this guy is a stupid idiot I'm talking about the year nine, 1990 when in, in the 90 when the Islamists they you know did I say did I say like this I'm talking about uh, 20 something years ago this guy he is going all the way to Algeria independent and uh, it did not all of a France voted what what does that mean is that in English I feel better about my English Algeria was part of a France it was not a colony this guy is an idiot stupid again you know I'm talking about the Islamist winning the election there is no a uh, France there dumb idiot this is an independent state. This is, let me show you. I like them, people. Islamic party in Algeria defeat ruling group in local election. Which year is that? January, oh sorry, June 1490. I don't know how old are you, but obviously you are a kid to go back to the independent thing. What independent? So we have a country already, they have a government. There's no France there no more, Abdul, potato. And the French, they were forcing this government to stop being dictators and to do election. And when the election happened, the Islamists, they won. And when they won, the French, they don't want the, this election to be practiced. So they sponsored the one they used to be against because they never thought the Islamists will win. The Mujahideen, the, the, the filthy ISIS. So, uh, uh, 
this is what we are talking about and this is stupid idiot because he is just angry for we are we ban him he is saying he's talking about the independent and Algeria was never a colony and was part of a France you eat it how since when it was part of a France Algeria was part of a France are you stupid France was occupying Algeria Syria Lebanon and they never been part of a France are you a donkey or what since when Algeria is part of a France it's an occupation unbelievable anyway uh, there is there is people who have a mentality of kids and always in order to find answers you can go and search whatever I say to you you can go to Prophet Google peace upon him and you can find what we are talking about it is the same party controlling the country for almost forever and obviously Algeria, Algeria they don't have a democratic regime they have a dictator regime however this dictator regime is ten times better than having an Islamic regime which they are going to be dictators anyway because the second they take over they will start forcing people to wear burqa what to eat what to drink and since then actually more than a million and a half Algerian was killed in the war between the Islamist and the Algerian government more than a million and a half but nobody talk about it right so Algeria uh, spent a lot of uh, blood fighting their own terrorist and their own government fighting their own religion obviously they don't want Islam to be the law and the religion of the country they want it to be just by name all right so this is what 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 we meant when we spoke about Algeria. What else? Sadly, many Arabic, mostly Muslims, Haraks, uh, Haraks, fought for a France army. What does this have to do with us? I mean, this is stupid. Look, this guy here went to, to 1964 and 58. I mean, there, you know, there is a say. There is a say in uh, in China. It says he left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. We talk about something. They talk about something else but what we can say I mean it's not my my business go and see a shrink uh, we go we go uh, to the news we are done with this uh, baby boy many countries are living like uh, rejecting uh, uh, as we said the order of uh, Trump but I assure you in the very soon time um, you know I don't know how to explain to you how what's happening like have you ever seen uh, people they want to swim but they are not sure how deep the water is or if they can dive because the water is not clear so they were waiting for someone is brave enough to jump and tell them and this is exactly what is going to happen Trump he jumped and he showed them that you are a bunch of cowards actually he mentioned it in his speech that those president before him but he said it in different way in a political way that some they say they are not brave enough to do it but, but this is the truth they are not brave enough to do it because they are politically correct the, the the bush family they have a very strong relationship with the saudi every was all of us we knew that you have a lot of business with them the bush family are oil pro production uh, businessmen uh, uh, and uh, Obama is their puppy uh, you know Billy Clinton is their dog uh, I mean you name it Billy Clinton until now uh, he get paid by the by the Saudi uh, and by the way if you want to invite Billy Clinton to make a speech in your birthday he charged sixty thousand dollars he will come and he will make a speech about you and he will say that you are you are the Prophet Muhammad peace upon you just give him sixty thousand dollars and he will say whatever you give him in the paper so all those president they used to be coward and they are cowards because they prefer their personal uh, agenda over the truth they are not scared of the Arab if we say or Muslims no it's not about being scared I say coward because they are they don't want to lose business all of them they get in a benefit of, of uh, uh, you know if not making the Muslims angry especially the rich one they don't care really for Pakistan and that potato tomato you know you will never hear any European country 
Count Bangladesh. Count Pakistan. Count Indonesia. Their only concern is countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar. Actually, just yesterday, Macron, the fish Macron, he signed an agreement, a business deal with the Qatari of many billion dollars. And that's why they care for them. Otherwise, they can fart at them anytime. They don't really care if the Muslims get angry or happy. It's all about hypocrisy. It's about money. Business. Business is business. Now, as long as those people, they understand only the language of business, so then we have to show them what business is. The more Israel show them that they are important, and you will see now Israel will become more important to the French people and European, especially after they discover a lot of oil in their land. You see, even USA was always trying to be uh, polite with Saudi Arabia because they need their oil. If you remember in 1973, uh, in the war between uh, uh, the Israeli and even before, you know, like in, in uh, during the war, uh, always, uh, always the Saudi, they used the pressure of oil on Western countries. And that especially for USA, because USA was depending on the Middle East oil. And why we are depending in the Middle East oil? Because there is a there's there is a business mafia in USA controlling the business, and they are left-minded people. They are from the left, not from the right. You know, imagine even they call us right. You know, they are the left. I mean, do you know what right mean? Yeah, we are right. So we are the right, and we are right, and they are the left, and they are stupid. For century, we are buying oil when we are sitting in the top of a ocean of oil and they forbid us from digging for oil because oil digging will damage the environment but all of them they drive four wheel drives cars and they buy oil so what the benefit i mean what what are you saving the environment from did you stop using cars did you decide to use bicycle stupid dumb idiot so for more than a century we were making the muslims rich we are the one who is feeding them from our money. We spend our money to buy dirty water. It's called oil. When we have a lot of it. So now we have a new leadership who believe that we have to be secure and independent in the oil. And we have a lot of it. We have more than all of them together. America have oil at least for the coming 300 years. At least, and this is based in what we discovered until now. God knows what we will discover tomorrow. And as you see, the situation is changing so soon because Israel is becoming an oil producer and gas producer, Israel can bend the arms of those countries and force them to be polite. Reconsider because sooner or later, if you play with the Russian, the Russian they can cut oil on you. The Turkish they can get the oil because it's coming through their land. There's many countries they are in control of that oil and the gas, Ukraine, Turkish, etc. So Europe soon is going to be under the mercy of Israel. And they will prefer to buy from Israel more than preferring to buy from Russia, which is their pipeline have to go through many countries. And we know how the Turkish, they are a gang, and they try always to break the arms of European and threat them always. If you, are, if you do something bad to us, we are going to cut the gas from you. We can cut the oil to you. So now with the existence of an oil producer, which is the Israeli, Europe can sleep comfortable and they can depend in Israel easy and Israel is not you know they are not people who change their mind over a cartoon you know what I mean they are not the same as Muslims you establish a business with them like what happened in whole, uh, to, to Netherlands you know when when in Netherlands somebody draw a cartoon of the of the potato Muhammad the Saudi they start be cutting 
the product of a cheese and milk from Netherland. So they are willing to be caught you over a cartoon. So doing business with Israel will not face such a stupidity. You can make cartoon of Netanyahu from now until tomorrow. You can make cartoon of David from now until tomorrow. The Israeli are not stupid and they will not be caught you and they will not stop producing to you because of your stupid cartoon. All right. All right. Somebody asking me about the debate yesterday. You know, I believe the debate was so good. However, uh, our our brother Adrian is uh, is new into debates. So you know, debates. Uh, this is, I think, the second time. And first time it was with the same guy. So this is the second time. So that guy he did a lot of debates. You know, so he knew how to play games. And this is and and you notice how the Muslim right away he started throwing rocks at our Christian brother. And the purpose is not to give him time to breathe. So when he take the mic, he will spend his time to respond, but not to question. And you notice that in the beginning, in the first 30 minutes, uh, our brother Adrian, he did not really ask and he did not say anything about Islam, which is very wrong, I believe. You know, he should start throwing rocks from the beginning. Because by not doing that, he gave the Muslim the chance to throw more rocks. You notice each time he take the mask, Mike, okay, I have more question for you, but we did not finish the first question. You know, he want to jump to second question. Why? Because he don't want him. He's afraid that he is going to give him a question. And then when our brother, he gave him the question, what happened to the Abdul? The Abdul was in trouble. It was just a simple question. He himself was asking him about the oath, as, as you remember. He said to him, so you Christian, when you take an oath, are you breaking the order of Jesus? No, we are not. Because Jesus said, give what to Caesar to Caesar and what God to God. So if Caesar says you work in Saturday, you work in Saturday. Because Caesar can kill you and Caesar can put you in jail and you've been ordered to obey Caesar. However, you obey Caesar as long you are not committing a crime. So if Caesar says you pay tax, we pay tax. If Caesar says you go to the army, you go to the army. Because this is not a, your crime, it is his crime. He is the one is forcing you. And you have to be, be obedient to the law. Christians are not a bunch of rebels to disturb peace of the country or to go out of the order of law and the excuse that God said. We've been ordered to be obedience. Same time, we've been ordered to say the truth. So, as a soldier, when you are in the army, your general, he says to you something. You believe it's wrong, but you have to obey. Because you are in the army. So, when a Christian in the court, he take an oath, he is just saying, yes, I agree with this. He is not taking an oath by repeating, I blah, 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 blah. He is just saying, yes, I will do. That's all. And this is what exactly what Jesus said. Either you say yeah, yeah, or nay, nay. But the question is, and I wish I was there, I will ask the Abdul, what about you, Abdul? When you take an oath to take a citizenship, isn't it the Quran says take not the Christians and Jews as a friends? It is funny that the hypocrite Muslim, he is the one questioning us about taking oath. So this is why, actually, I wish that our brother there, he put him in the corner right away and he punched him in the face, not physically for sure, but, uh, you know, let us say, uh, by exposing him. A Muslim is a questioning us about taking oath. The whole taqiyya is saying, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. Chapter 3 verse number 28 chapter 5 verse number 51 chapter even chapter 9 verse 23 it says take not your Family your parents your mother your father your brother as Protectors Why because they are Not Muslims so Muslims is allowed to take legion only to Islam and the funny the Abdul was giving us a lecturer about how a Christian is taking an oath to be a citizen so that was a you know a golden opportunity for our brother Adrian 
to 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 make him shish kebab right away in the spot but he did not do it and you know this is his uh, his debate i cannot be involved with it however i believe he did a great job he asked him many serious questions and the muslim abdul was really in trouble and if you remember when the abdul he spoke about uh, uh about taqiyya he, he himself voluntarily he started talking about it because he knew he might be asked about it so you see like when somebody is a thief he knew that uh, uh, the police is coming for him, right? So he started talking about it be, uh, before even anyone asked him. And actually, Adrian did not even ask him about it. You will see that he said, like, as an example, what if your wife, uh, she is ugly and she asked you if she is beautiful? <laughs> you see how hypocrite they are? Supposedly, they are, they are telling us that lying, there's a white lie. This is not a white lie. This is not a white lie. That mean you can lie to anyone. If I say to you, okay, well, you know what? Are you my friend? You say, yes, I am your friend. I ask you, are you honest with me? You say, yes, I am honest. Because if I, if you say, if you say the opposite, I will be upset. So the excuse is, I'm not going to make you upset. So I'm going to lie, right? Look at this chapter in the Quran. It says, Oh, who you believe, take not for a friend the unbelievers. Rather than the believers, do you wish to offer Allah an open, uh, open proof? Actually, it doesn't say that in the verse in the Quran. You see, the Muslim translation is a, stu a stupid translation. I mean, those people are really stupid. It says more than that. If you take them as a friend, Allah will curse you. Allah will punish you. Do you want, do you want Allah to be upset from you? If you take them as a friends or protectors so the Muslim Abdul was asking the Christian person why you take an oath when Jesus forbid you from taking oath you Muslims are you see the Christian he have no problem to be obedient to the government and he is not going to play taqiyya so when he say yes yes he believe in that and he will defend the country he is going to be a citizen for it but the Muslim is not allowed to be a citizen of any country If he mean to protect that country if it is not an Islamic the Quran says it clearly all you believe take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protectors they are but the friends and protectors to each other and he amongst you who take them in the friendship of them obviously he is unjust and if you go to the interpretation you will see he is out of Islam he is an apostate same we can we can show you from chapter 3 verse number 28 if you take them as a friend that will make you the enemy of Allah chapter 3 verse 28 the verse the famous verse of the taqiyya and this is what the muslim they practice always when they debate you remember that the muslim they don't debate the muslim they play taqiyya from the first second to the last second in what it's called debate so you will see look what it says the Muslim they say to you, what if Saddam Hussein he hanged me up to kill me? I will say to him whatever he say. The verse is so clear. It says, take them not as a friend <laughs> or a protectors. So he is not going to kill you. This guy he want to he want to protect you. The verse is speaking about taking them as a friends and make them honored. There is no war. It's a lie. Take not the disbelievers or the Jews for your friends. But he just told us if somebody want to kill me and his war and war is deception. What does this have to do with war? This verse have nothing to do with war. Somebody want to take you as a friend. Islam says take them not as a friend. But however, you can lie to them and say you are a friend. As long your heart is just like this. So my friend uh, uh, debating Abdul, uh, let us say uh, for Adrian, who is first time, or let us say this is the second time he is debating Muslims, he did a very great job. Uh, actually, I'm really impressed of what he did. He was uh, firm with the Bible, was so strong, and he hit the Muslim many times, and he punished him, and he made him bleed. And he made him look so foolish when he said, you can, you know, you can take a false oath as long as it is not intention. What does that mean? You can use the name of God in vain? 
So the Muslim Abdul saying to us, we Muslims, we have no dignity, and our God is a potato. We can use his name to false oath. We can say, I can say, I swear by Allah, I'm going to visit you tomorrow, and tomorrow never, never, never do, because I don't mean it. This is what he's saying to us. I swear to Allah, I'm going to pay you your money back, but I don't mean it. As long as not, your intention is not to mean it, it's okay. I mean, how disgusting and satanic that is. I can take an oath, and Allah will not take me accountable unless I mean it. Well, all the thieves, all the criminals, they don't mean what they say when they promise you a false promise. If a, if a person who works in a scam, and he calls you in the phone and he says, I promise you, I swear by God, that your money is secure. According to the Abdul in the video we saw in the debate, he is a good guy because he don't have intention to uh, to take the oath. The oath is just to fool you. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Adrian, he did a great job. There's no question about that. I'm so proud of him. However, he can really make this guy shrimp. You know, this, do you know how easy it is to, to fry a shrimp? Especially this shrimp boy, he was asking for it. He was telling him, like, hit me, hit me, you know, like, because let me tell you what happened. This guy, he was expecting that this is an American guy. He know nothing about Islam. And he saw some videos of him talking about taqiyya. And this is easy to go around, you know, like to play with it. But he was not expecting much. However, uh, let us say he was lucky that he lost only four of his teeth, not all of them. But I assure you that in the next debate, if he debated Adrian again, Adrian, he will be sure to take all his teeth and put it in the museum. All right. So it was a good debate for a, for a person who, this is the second time he do debate Muslims. Uh, he was really uh, very good, especially I, I, I like the way he was uh, firm with the Bible and he, you know, he showed the Muslims how stupid they are when they question the Bible and how dumb their question is. You see, the Muslims are copy-paste nation. You know, like he don't even, he didn't even read the verse, you know, he copy it, you know, to make, he want to make you believe that he know the Bible, but he do not know. He go and search on website. This is why you see, actually, if you notice, this guy was receiving text. In his phone, did you notice it? Did you notice through, through the debate he was receiving text? This is not him searching in the internet because he was reading the question. He was reading the question from the phone. But already he had many papers and he prepared supposedly, so he was receiving text to ask questions. And even though he had many people ask, like, helping him in this debate, even though he was smashed. There's one thing I don't like about the debate that the ladies at the end she gave the last word for the Muslim. That's not right. You see, because the Muslim at the end he tried to revenge, so he started blah 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 blah. You know, she gave the microphone at the beginning to the Muslim, so the last word should be given to the Christian. You start with one, you end with the other one. You don't start with the same guy and you end with the other guy. That is not a smart move of her. And you know, uh, the other thing I don't like uh, the introduction of this woman. She is a blah blah. She have a multi multi a million dollar. I don't like this. Uh, you know, I mean, this is like advertising commercial. I mean, this is not right. You know, get a, mod a moderator. He do not. It's not. A, it's not a nu nuclear science. Somebody will switch the mic when the time is up. Ten years old can do it. This is something I don't like about the debate. However, in general, uh, it was very good. And Adrian, I'm so proud about him. And as I said. This person, he is. This is his second debate, so you cannot compare him to Christian Prince. I know I have. I don't know. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of debate I have, <laughs> because the more debate you do, the more you learn about the mentality of the Abdul. It's not about you learn. Like uh, let us say, uh, let us say you are knowledgeable, you know, but debate is not just only about you having knowledge. It's about you learn how to use it in a fast method in the moment in the second and how you learn how you take what the other person trying to prove you wrong with and throw it back at him. 
so everything this guy Abdul he said to me or said to Adrian in the debate can be used as a killer punch will destroy Islam immediately and actually this is why this guy he himself is offering Adrian to debate him you know what I mean if you notice Adrian he made it clear that it was the Muslim guy who approached to him to debate him ask yourself a question why the Muslim don't send me such an email they want to debate me right why he is so desperate to debate Adrian because he he thought that Adrian he is just a Canadian guy he do not know Arabic and he do not know much about Islam he's watched some videos online he learned a little bit about Taqiyya and what he can do but surprisingly not even one Muslim can find me to challenge me to debate we sit here for hours says any Abdul any Abdul and no Abdul we are out of them and then you look at the debate yesterday we find that there is there like 60 or 70 Abdul suddenly they are all over and actually the funny yesterday if you notice in the text in the chat when he was speaking about Taqiyya did you notice I said what if my my wife is fat do you remember he said exactly what I said and I think he was he was somehow looking at the text maybe <laughs> <laughs> so he copied my statement he think I'm a Muslim Arabian prophet <laughs> you know what I mean I think he was looking at the chat and he liked my idea I am the one who said what if my wife fat and she asked me if she is and you know if she is a skinny I would say she is a skinny <laughs> so he took exactly as I said and he and he explained Taqiyya that okay what if your wife she is uh, sorry the, the the false oath what if your wife she asked you uh, not not false oath about uh, lying to your wife what if your wife she asked you if she is fat yeah i mean look how silly and how stupid this, uh, this this statement is if your wife is fat or not if she is not beautiful in your eyes why you marry her so you are telling me you maintain the relationship in marriage in islam by lying all your marriage is based on lies do you love me honey yes i love you i love a lie i don't like her you know she is fat uh, uh honey did you marry another woman you know i can show you the fatwa where it says a man he is allowed to lie and not to tell his wife that he have a second wife or third wife because simply if he told her she would be angry and that will screw his business his life so you you better not to tell her so it is lawful so it's not about fat and skinny it's about serious issue you are allowed even to lie about marriage you marry four women and you tell each one of them that she is the only one if you want you are honey the only one in my life you know what when i see you you are the best actually look at your lips they remind me of yasser arafat peace upon him is that doctors or this is the natural like yasser arafat oh honey they are like yasser arafat not natural I mean, what stupid this religion is. So you can lie to your wife, and the wife, not, by the way, not only the, the husband can lie to the wife, even the wife, she can lie to the husband. Who in the world want to marry or have relationship like this? Everything in this marriage is about, I can lie to you, and you can lie to me, and Allah is happy. Unless our, both of them, they are under the oath of the devil. If a man and a woman they can they, they, they are allowed to lie to each other and they are wife and husband I mean who is left who is left this is your wife this is your family so the Muslim he start practicing his lies right from his household so if he lied to his wife do you think he will be honest with you obviously he will not so when the Muslim he justify it and if you notice he said this is a white lie I like it white lie what do you mean white lie there's a there's a black lie and white lie and brown lie lie is a lie you are lying to your wife 
and this is not a small uh, lie your wife she asked you did you marry another woman because you are coming late etc no honey you are the only woman in my life but the guy he have two more or, or three more women so this line about serious issue this is why you notice you see you know that I am from the Middle East and supposed I am an Arab so we grow up between the Muslims and you know uh, uh, I remember once a Muslim woman she was advising my mother I was a kid I was listening she was advising my mother to change her the furniture my mother she said but it looked good why why I want to change it she said take my advice men if they don't spend their money they will look for other women my mom she said to her well we are Christians so our marriage is eternal so she was advising my mother that she need to spend more money in furniture because the husband you, you, you need you need to suck his money you know you need to change the curtains change the rags change the the, the, the couches change your bedroom how, how long how many years you have your bedroom uh, my mom she said I don't know since we get married but well, change it change it you know men men if they get rich right away they will look for different women you know she said we don't have this garbage we are Christians so Muslim women if you marry a Muslim woman she will suck your money she will make you spend money like crazy because not because she is being bad no because she is married under the law of the devil she have no security she have no guarantee that her husband will stay with her and she is always worried that this idiot he is going to get a brand new wife she is younger and she is more beautiful so this is what happened a Muslim he married you for a few years at that time you were six years old now you are nine you are old you are ancient actually at the age of nine so so now he was you are 13 now oh man 13 she is very old you are 17 17 you're disgusting so he start looking for a child to marry as Muhammad even Muhammad he said that the women she get married for three reasons let us find the hadith What is the reason? Number one reason is oh, let me hold on, let me find the hadith. So there is some hadith they say the woman she is going to be effed for three reasons, not to get married, by the way, to, to be effed. Because Islam practice if in contract. Look at this one. A woman may be married. You see, they are translating the word tunkah to marry. This is not marriage. This is to f a woman, to have a sex contract with her. Why a Muslim woman should should be married? Muhammad is giving advice for the Muslims. What is number reason appear for you in the screen? To take a woman. Look with me. Read with me. This is Muhammad talking, not me. This is the Muslim false translation, not my translation, because it doesn't say married, it says tunkah. And we showed you before from Islamic website that the word nukah means to F a woman. So a woman may be, Muslim translation, be married for four reasons. Number one, for her property. Number two, for her statues. Number three, her beauty. Number four is her religion. So what is the most important reason to, to, according to them, to marry a woman? In the translation, is her property. And this is exactly what Muhammad did with Khadija. Her statues, what does that mean? She's from an important family. They can get you a good position. You will have a protection. You will have a label in the society. You will have a position in the society. You can become a leader if you marry her. That is the second reason. Number three reasons, she is beautiful. <laughs> Number four, she is a Muslim. <laughs> so the last reason for a Muslim to marry a woman 
who is decent supposedly because supposedly if you are a religious person you are decent right but not in the case of Islam you know when you are a Muslim you are the opposite you are not decent because Islam teach you to lie as we showed you so Muhammad himself he is saying huh? that this is the reason and then look what he says here look so try to get the one who is religious may your hand uh, bus made with dust what is, what does that mean Muhammad is advising you that if you you have all those reasons at the end you have to still you have to find someone she is religious did Muhammad marry a religious woman none of them was religious Khadija she was not Aisha she was not Sophia she was a Jew which is the which of which one of the women Muhammad he married and she was religious none Actually Aisha she accused him many times that he is a liar Anyway, I wish we have a Muslim so maybe maybe he will not like what I said he will say to you No, Muhammad is saying marry the woman women. She is a Muslim You know, you know Muhammad he even uh, allowed Muslim to marry non non Muslims. So what are you talking about? Is a is a Christian woman is a religious for Muhammad or she is a kuffar? Huh? Is she a religious or a kuffar? Anyway, so the whole religion is is based on in in uh, in lying, and the same as Muhammad. You know, if Muhammad is a is like, look how what Jesus he speak about, and what Muhammad he speak about, and the funny the Muslim they say to us that uh, uh, Jesus was supposedly his name is Isa in Islam. They are both speaking for the same God. Well, if they are speaking of the same God, it doesn't make sense because one of saying to us, even oath is forbidden. And the other one saying, you can take as many as you want as false oath. The man, he can lie to his wife. The wife, she can lie to her husband. You can lie to none. To, to the non Imagine if Jesus says you can lie to non-Christians. So when the Muslim, they say that Jesus is a Muslim, that is very insulting to Jesus, actually. Because in order for Jesus to be a Muslim, he had to be child molester like Muhammad. He had to be a thief. He had to be a criminal. He had to be a liar. He had to be bewitched. He had to be a person who speak about the size of his penis and how many women they sl he slept with. I mean, look at this, guys. How in the world somebody is a prophet, he talked about what he, what's, what he did with his wives. What kind of a prophet he says to his followers, Allah, he sent me a dish of shish kebab, I get it, and I ate it, and I get the power of 40 men. And what kind of God he is sending kebab and shish kebab to a prophet to improve his penis. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that Muhammad, God, if he sends, if he if wants something to be, he say, B is going to be, so why he send him a dish of shish kebab? He just say be fix the penis of Muhammad Muhammad have a problem with his penis and Allah will not accept that to happen to Muhammad because Muhammad penis is more important than anything in the world so there is no way Allah will let that happen right do we have any Muslim would like to call us do we have any Muslim would like to challenge me Any Abdul? I'm trying to find a hadith. I can't find it. I don't know. You know, this search engine sometimes is stupid. I don't know what's wrong with them, you know. Let me see. <clears throat> now, this is a prophet. 
and this Jesus is a prophet I mean go and read every word Jesus said Jesus said he and she they will not meet married you know they ask him about the women when she she married more than one husband who is going to be who is the one who will have her who's going to be her husband in heaven what Jesus said he confirmed clearly that in the heaven of God in the kingdom of God there is no sexual relationship for the house of God is more noble than this but in Islam look what Muhammad is promising the Abdul you see if we have the same God we should have the same heaven do we agree right if we have the same God we should have the same heaven but we don't it's obvious look at this idiot what he is promising the Abdul he swear by Allah saying that not even single one of you which means Shabir Ali included whom Allah admit to paradise but Allah will make him if not to you know uh, uh, he, he will marry uh, 72 wives by the way 72 wives is the lowest numbers of a believer which means a bad believer it's like Nauman Khan you know he was uh, uh, you know not a good believer uh, Two from the Huris and 70 from the inheritance of hell. I mean, Allah is going to import women from hell. Now, do you know why those hell women, they are imported? Because they are supposedly uh, prostitute. They are very good in sex. Prostitutes, there is something about them. They are professional. And most of them, they are beautiful. So Muhammad is a promising the Abdul that he will bring you bring him 70 women who do red flag business and he will import them to the Abdul and look what he did what he say about those red 70 women who have red flag it says all who whom have desirable front passages what what does that mean what what do you mean exactly those 70 women they are coming from hell but they are the best of women and they have nice breast and a very beautiful vagina what is what any Muslim can explain to me what is that the front what 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 the front we are talking about any Abdul what exactly the front we are going to have bigger breast nice breast and beautiful vagina we can grow trees there and then look what he said and he will have a male member that never become a, 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 a soft I mean that would be embarrassing you have 70 women and their vagina is ready and your penis is not working you turn the fan is the only way to move it like you turn the fan on the, 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 the penis is moving you turn the fan off the penis is uh, it's like a piece of you know fabric so Allah he thought about this Allah is a smart God do, do you think Allah is a stupid God he's not he knew that you need to have a special penis so look what Allah is saying to us here according to Muhammad that Allah in the heaven in his heaven he will make a male enhancement surgery for you and he will adjust the power of your penis so he will upgrade your penis from a normal one huh? To a very like a drill machine. Next, 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 because the battery is charging. You know? I mean, you see, this is God. So it's very stupid from a Muslim when he say to you that we Christians and Muslims we share the same God. Your God is a pimp. Your God is working for pimp marketing in Las Vegas. Any one of you been in Las Vegas? Who been in Las Vegas before? Don't be shy. It's, you know, I I've been in Las Vegas. So what? Anyone been in Las Vegas? If you go in the bathroom in Las Vegas, you know, I used to work with the army. Used to be in the army, and they 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 reserve for us flights. And most of the time, because of where our base, uh, we we uh, you know. Sometimes they don't have a like there's a delay blah blah blah. So uh, they, they reserve for us actually in the hotel. It's paid by the army Anyway, so in the hotel Which every hotel there is a casino anyway uh, 
you go to the bathroom the public bathroom of the hotel what do you find in the in the public bathroom in the hotel you will find advertising cards in the top like you know that the, you know men when standing so you will find those cards lined up all over and those cards to call so they can send you a female prostitute you call that line and they will ask you what kind of women you like so Allah and Muhammad they can be hired immediately as a pimp manager this is not God and why Muhammad is telling them that such a thing why he is talking about the power of their penis why Muhammad is guaranteed and then don't worry be happy your penis will be functioning there very well this is a prophet of God and what if I don't want to have a penis like this I mean do I really is listen guys is sex is a joy if it became all day long this is not a joy it's like this is this is a punishment there's a woman you like you love and you you know how you, you make love to her not just sex in Islam those women you do not know them you never met any of them not even single one of them they are made just sex toys so it's fake you see uh once when i was in asia uh, i spoke to a person and he was telling me uh you know uh, i like asia because here it's uh, more uh, entertaining and etc i said entertaining like what he said you know like he's easy you know easy going people easy going i said what do you mean easy going people I, i'm not sure you know I, I know what he's talking about i just i want him to say it so anyway he said here it's very easy to find a beautiful prostitute i said so what is the benefit of being with a prostitute he said well she give you what you want i said what do you want he said come on you are a man and i'm a man we know what we want i said well i am a man too but the sleeping with a prostitute mean very simple thing for me it's mean you are not good for her to the point she will not sleep with you unless you are paying her which means you are ugly disgusting creature which means she hate you but because she need your money she is willing to sacrifice and kiss you All right this is the truth those prostitutes they are not sleeping with you because you are good but because you are disgusting You are using them for you have money and they need your money and they are using you for you are stupid you are a stupid dump who believe that she is making love to you but the fact you are just being like a puppy stupid idiot you spend your money over fake kisses and fake touches everything is fake how desperate is a man to go and hire a prostitute? I mean, how really how desperate you are? And Muhammad, he promote that. He is hiring a prostitute. All what he is saying that you will not pay for them, Allah will pay. But those women, they don't love you. This you see in the whole story here. Do you see the word love? Anyone see the word love? There's no love. It's sex. It's just a pure sex. Those women who do not know who they are, imagine you go to heaven, and this heaven supposedly is a hotel in, in, in Las Vegas. You open your, Allah, he give you su, uh, like a suite there. And you open it, you open the door, you find 72 women, and they are naked, and their legs is open. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to spend my eternity doing this. I will spend my eternity having sex with 72 whore and that is supposedly heaven what about you give me a woman she love me and I love her 
and we live together forever what about you give me a different kind of satisfaction something you never experienced yet I mean sex we know what is sex what kind of God is God is if you go in the Quran you will find let me show you what the Quran you see I was thinking to make this video short but you guys you are you are bad you make me stay long unbelievable I hate you all of you may Allah make you all of you skinny and if you are skinny may Allah make you fat all right have you ever heard of God he promised you couches I mean couch are you serious come to my town and I will take you in a drive around and you will find how many couches are in the driveway people are trying to get rid of them and the city they make them pay extra money to throw it away and they are almost new and Allah he promised me couch in heaven and not only a couch to be honest with you a pillow Oof, man all my life I wanted to have a pillow you know our pillow is the best and forget about the rest a God promising me a pillow what hold on hold on I will show you something you will not believe I, I, I'm serious you will not believe imagine if Allah he says to you that Allah will give you a couch or a bed and you are going to flip your body over it unbelievable I will do that I will not only you will lay down you flip like you are in, you are in the right side and then you go to the left side that's amazing Allah is promising me such a thing it's incredible chapter 37 verse number 44 did I tell you the story of 44 did, did I tell you the story of 44 once I was in the Philippines you know because I'm a cheap guy uh, you know poor guy I mean and uh, I like uh, I like to make my expenses very low and actually I like to associate with people too so I took the bus you know I'm not a rich guy so I can take off for the taxi so I took the bus and the bus between two cities now the guy he came to me and he said uh, I gave him the money and then he said to me uh, sir I have to pay you back 44 pesos I, I said how much he said 44 I said say it one more time and keep the money 44 pesos is like a, a less than a dollar you know <laughs> so this guy he came back to me he said sir can I say it one more and you pay me I said no that's it <laughs> 44 pesos anyway so Allah in chapter 37 verse number 44 okay he said the following that Allah will give you should I make like a mystery should I make like a drama music behind action commercial have you ever thought of having a bed and you can flip in that bed a bed the kind you like you love to lay down in it I mean what the heck is that this is God Ugh. guys do you see do you see the promise of Allah look look here here it says facing each other on thrones it doesn't say that what facing in each other in throne what this guy is talking about who is the one is facing each other in thrones the Muslims or oh hold on hold on hold on he's right they are facing each other in the throne I was wrong so are you saying to us Muslims you will be all of you in one bedroom and you have a group a group sex who is the one is facing who in the beds any Muslim can tell us who is facing who in the bed throne of dignity you see he had the word dignity what dignity the whole room is full of sex you idiot what, what dignity where is the dignity 
if you read the promises you will you will laugh from dying now we have a garden and in the garden we have beds and we are facing each other in the beds around us there is past a cup of a clear flowing fountain do you know what fountain is that anyone knows there's a fountain and they will bring us a club from that fountain that is the fountain of youth the fountain of youth crystal white of taste delicious to those who drink ew. I mean look this drink mysterious drink it is a cup of a clear from a flowing uh, uh, mountain a fountain sorry and it is a crisp crystal white 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 of taste delicious of those who drink free from hiddenness nor they will suffer in wow, they are talking about vodka Aha. you see you will drink from this cup but you will not get drunk Allah will give you the ability to handle the alcohol do you see it and then beside them will be the virgins the women who have their vagina never been touched restraining in their gallons in their tents look with me here what it says about rest restraining what do you know what does that mean those women they are jailed they are jailed they can't get out they are restrained they are there for you and they cannot leave they are jailed and the, all of this is a tent big tent muhammad he says that muslim he will have a tent and the border of it or the edge of it is 70 mile but remember here he said that they are facing each other on the throne do you see it so now we have the muslims facing each other in the throne and around them they will be serving drink of alcohol but still you they will not get drunk don't worry and there is women who they are the virgins ready for you to have sex with but they are facing each other who is facing who the muslims so the muslim they having they are facing each other and they will have a group sex do you see guys this is not my translation it's not translation you know they are facing each other who is facing who the muslims there's no christian there the one who will be th sitting in the thrones are those are the abdul those are the men and then he is telling them what you men you will have and you will see all those promises about what will happen to the men where is the women where is the muslim women the wife of shabir ali what will happen to her where she will go what she will get according to uh zakir naik he said that the word hur doesn't mean it is a, it is a, a you know a virgin it can be a man too not necessarily a woman so she will get a 70 to 72 uh, men to have sex with her here those women are restrained in their gallons and their tents just to f them and look at this as if they were delicate eggs closely guarded Oof. i mean guys i feel like i want to convert to islam you see women allah he respect you very much so he describe you as if you are eggs <laughs> and we are going to break them one by one how we break them we break their vagina first vagina second vagina third vagina and the Muslim Abdul he will be holding his phone and using what's up and he said to his brother brother how many you did already brother I did 40 brother I did 41 now 42 now 43 what all the translation by the way you see in the front of you all of it is false they're trying to make it even look nicer than what it is Pillows, couches, 
you will be reclining on the couches like what and not only that guys you will not believe what Allah he promised the Muslims do you know that Allah will give you a door for your house in the heaven I mean isn't it this is amazing isn't it this is beautiful that in the heaven of Allah he is going to give you a door for your house what what we will give you a door What kind of a promise this promise is? Do you know why he promised them such a promise? That you will have a door for your house? And look, this guy, he put it silver. That doesn't say silver there. Stupid idiot. Liar. And doors to their houses. Oof. And look, he add the word silver again. I mean, what? <laughs> just to show you, just to show you the mentality and the stupidity of the Muslims. They think if they make it out of silver, that will make it like worth it. I mean, uh, isn't it stupid? Silver is so cheap, man. What do you mean silver? What is the price for one kilograms of, of gold? It's cheap. Buying a car is a lot more expensive than buying a door made from gold. Go and buy BMW. How much weight the, the gold will be for your door? Five kilograms? Ten kilograms? Go and check what the price of BMW or Mercedes or Ferrari. So Allah, he promised you a door made from silver, according to the translation. And your house will have a door. I mean, why our house have a door? And what does that mean exactly? There's there's thieves there. There's a crimes. The doors is meant for what? I mean, what the purpose of having a door? I have a door of my house so nobody can get in. This is God the promise. And look, you will have a roof for your houses. Ish. Ish. Anyone notice why those promises are made? Anyone notice why those stupid promises are there? Because those are Bedouin, they never have a door for their house, and they never have a roof. <laughs> If somebody he live in a France you will say to him I'm going to give you a door for your house he have a door for his house and he have a roof for his house even they ask him what they do what this guy is talking about he's talking is promising the savage Bedouin who they take a shower once every few years who they never have a house with a door how we can seduce them to believe to follow me i will give them promises of things they dream of a bed couches pillows and the pillows they are covered by fabric made in iran even the fabric of allah is imported from the persian the kuffar at that time If you do not know how the Arab tents is, I will show you. Let me search for some pictures. So we can show you. All right. Uh, there is many pictures actually, but I wanna. I'm trying to find something more clear. 
anyway, you know how tent it is. I mean, it's a tent. It's not uh, something, nothing changed when you say about tents. For sure, like the new ones, uh, they are a lot nicer. They have a flooring, they have a, a insect protection, etc. But the, the Bedouin tents, and now this is after what? After the wealth they have. Let me show you. So the tent now is like a villa. So look, they have nice rags, they have etc. But but they did not have that before. It was just a small, tiny piece of fabric, and people they sleep inside. And it has no walls, has uh, no roof as a roof. It's just a fabric, you know. Uh, when there is a wind, they, they 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 put the fabric down. When there is no wind, they lift it up so more air will come through. Um, and when when they are out of uh, out of a grass, they carry their houses and they leave. This is why they are Bedouin, you know, because they live uh, in a land. It's a desert, and there is no enough, uh, you know, uh, grass. So they have to move from place to place, and it doesn't make them bad to be this way. I mean, so what? But th the point is, uh, the God of Islam is promising the Bedouin. He was talking to the Bedouin. For those promises are stupid for someone who don't he is not a Bedouin. Why in the world you say to them, I'm going to give you a house, have a roof? Why you say to somebody, I'm going to give you a house, have a door or a window? Simply because this is like a dream for them. This is luxury. They don't have beds. They sleep in the floor. They don't have pillows as, as the one we know today. Their pillows was made from grass. Tough and hard. Only the rich ones, they have a nice life. And the rich one at that time in the Bedouin desert, his housing is like is less than your house anywhere in USA today. So this is why the dreams of those Bedouin is what is a promised. They like wine. They love to drink. They like because their life is simple. I mean, what do we, what do you do? You have a bunch of goats, and you drink. You have sex. That's it. That's it. There's no TV to watch. There's no movie to watch. There's no uh, uh, theater. There's nothing. Your life is very simple. You have a bunch of goats. You take care of them. You feed them during the day. You go back home. You have your wife waiting for you. You have sex. You sleep. You snore. You wake up in the morning. You do the same. So the founder of Islam, he knew what those people are desperate to have. So he promised them what they are looking for. Roof. And there is a stair. And you will be looking at those, uh, you will stare up at those roofs. You will be like, wow, look at this roof, man. And then look at the gold. You're, you know, like even Allah, he promised them bracelets of gold and silver. What is that? What is the value of gold and silver in heaven? You know, in a place where everything is for free. Imagine you are in heaven and everything is for free. And then somebody says to you, I'm going to give you 1,000 tons of gold. Okay, what I will do with it? What I will do with the gold and the silver? And you will notice how this Allah, he mentioned only the known material at that time because there is more expensive material than gold and silver is that correct there is certain kind of metals are a lot more expensive as an example there's a what is called blantium in english what they call it they are more expensive than gold hmm?
Let us see. Imagine here in this chapter, chapter 76, verse 15, you are going to be served with cups made from silver. Oof. 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 That's astonishing. I cannot wait. The silver. Let us see. The other one we spoke about this one actually already uh, look at this one in chapter 76 verse number 21 Allah described for you what you will wear in the heaven all the Muslims will wear a green uniform and this green uniform brother is made in Iran upon them will be green garment of fine silk what and they will be wearing the bracelet of silver <laughs> you know what i cannot go i don't like to go to hospitals for two reasons the smell and because i feel disgusted when i see the the doctors wearing green <laughs> so imagine you will be in the heaven for eternity. Oh, everybody there wearing green clothes. And those clothes, they never have a wrinkle and they will never damage, which means you will never change them. Because in the heaven of Allah, you will not sweat, you will not piss, you will not uh, have a, you know, so your garment you wear, that's it. You are going to stay with it for the coming trillion billion year. And that silk is, as we said, it's made in Iran. You see here the word in Arabic is istabraq. Now ask yourself, the Muslim, they say to us, by the way, the Muslim, they, they say that the Quran is a pure Arabic, right? Now is the word istabraq Arabic? No. It's a name of a fabric made in Iran. Why Allah is importing a fabric from Iran? And why he is talking about making the Muslims wear a bracelet? I mean, isn't it gay to be a man and wear a bracelet? You know what I mean? Why a man he will wear a bracelet? You see, like there is a, uh, some some men they wear uh, like uh, what it's called like a chain around your hand. I can let that go, but a bracelet is a bracelet. The word here in Arabic is a sour. A sour is something only women wear, and I never saw a man in the Middle East wearing such a thing, for it is only gay who do that. And those bracelets are made from gold, sorry, from, from silver. But as you know, silver will not really is not uh, silver doesn't say clean. It doesn't say with nice color. Do you know that? You have you have to clean the silver using some certain chemicals. Otherwise, the silver will get uh, will get dark and will get ugly. What kind of a promise is this promise? I will give you a green uh, garment made from uh, silk imported from Iran. Are you sure? That's amazing. I mean, uh, it's so beautiful. Any Abdul have a comment? So I can say to you, you know, if you like to have a garment made from silk and it's a green, you better convert to Islam. If you like to have a bracelet from silver, you have to convert to Islam. If you have to like, if you have, if you like to have a penis, which will never sleep, uh, you have to convert to Islam. Why you want to buy Viagra? I mean, come on. It's not even uh, healthy. No Viagra, Viagra free, but your penis will be like point. Don't you like to have a penis like this? 
and those women my friend the women in heaven not like the women in America I mean <laughs> look the women in the heaven they are jellyfish every woman in the heaven of Allah they will be like a jellyfish Uh, imagine imagine a God who promised me a woman and supposedly she is so beautiful to the point I will see the marrow of her bones I mean how sexy that is how beautiful let me show you the hadith look look at this look Eww. I mean who of us men forget about those women in the chat I mean they are disgusting don't ever think to marry a woman a human being after after now wait for the virgin in the heaven look my friend how beautiful they are the women in the heaven they are out of jealousy which means she is a whore she don't care for you whoever you sleep with I mean who why a whore will give a damn if you sleep with with one 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 thousand additional whore right only women who loves you she will care so Allah he will bring you a whore who have no jealousy they will they are trouble free they will not get jealous sleep as many as you want and don't worry be happy Number two, everyone here based on this hadith will have two huris, two huris, all right? And those huris, they are so beautiful to the point they are transparent. All my life, I'm looking for a transparent girl. Any any girl in the chat, she is a transparent and she is looking for a husband. Let me introduce myself. I'm a black, blonde, African American from Japan looking for a brand new wife, and she is a transparent. Not even a single woman there is a transparent. I'm so disappointed. Not even one. What's wrong with those women? Why in the world we will marry a woman after today? I'm going to wait. I have a very legitimate reason now to not to stay to stay single forever. I want to have a woman, she is a transparent. And let me tell you the benefit of having a transparent woman. Okay. Have you ever heard of a woman? She take the, the the credit card of her husband, and she went to the to the uh, uh, to Macy's, and she bought some bags with it. Huh? <laughs> now listen to this. Shut up. Come on, show respect. If your wife, oh, come on. Okay, hold on, hold on. This one, this. I mean, look. If your wife after today she took your credit card and even if she swallow it you can see it through because she is transparent she can hide nothing from you even the food she ate you can see the hamburger in her stomach she cannot deny that she is the one who ate it even the hummus even the falafel even her shit is going to be seen through the transparent body I mean how beautiful and how sexy that is and not only that not only you will see her shit excuse my language you will see even the marrows of her bones Eww. look how beautiful that scene have you ever looked at x-ray picture Abdul, have you ever looked at X-ray picture? Be honest with me. Ah, Abdul, he do not know what X-ray mean. No, you, actually, the first, one, the founder of X-ray is Muhammad, as you see. So imagine, guys, 
this is the chest of your wife let me show you her chest this is not my wife by the way I'm not going to show you my wife's chest no way especially my wife you know she have a nice chest I don't know even who is she look at this look how beautiful it is Eesh. I mean who can resist this you will see the bone the marrow of the bones even more like you see that the x-ray doesn't show you really details you will see the inside the inside of the bones I mean especially especially when you look at her neck Eesh, look how sexy this is is Wow so beautiful who can resist such a temptation of Allah so we will have in heaven women who they are transparent and we can see the marrows of their bones look at their beautiful teeth look look at this area this area alone will be the most sexy part I'm not going to tell you which area is that this is where you kiss her this is her teeth <laughs> You will say to your wife, honey, your teeth is so beautiful. What is that? Wow. Oh, look at this. I mean, this is. Guys, sorry, I'm going to sign right away in transparentwomen.com website. I want to get a woman like that. Isn't it beautiful to be a Muslim? And Allah is preparing all of this for us? Transparent women? What's wrong with you? You should convert to Islam immediately if you like to see the high-tech technology of Allah. Obviously what Allah will do, He is going to... Uh... Hold on. Is Allah going to upgrade our eyes or he is going to upgrade the women obviously the women because those women they are transparent it's not your eyes became able to see through you know what I mean the women they are transparent so this is how they look like and imagine how disgusting that is and how stupid such a promise but you guys do not understand why Muhammad he made this promise anyone knows who remember what is the purpose of this promise promising the Bedouin the Arab to have a woman they are you can see through their bones anyone knows who want to tell me the Arab Bedouin they love white women they hate black brown skin so Muhammad for he know how racist they are he knew what kind of women they like to sleep with so he is exaggerating with his lies saying to them they are so white to the point you can see through you know what I mean this is was not a promise for no reason he knew what they like they like white women and how we can promise them white women they never seen like before actually the word whore for those who do not know is not really about the eyes you know uh, you see the word in Arabic here it says hurul ain. Let me give you a little bit of Arabic class. I'm going to go to the root, the root deeper than what we do usually. Should I do that or no? This is the word hur. Let us switch to Arabic. Hur. And then you will see next to it, the Muslim, they say, al -ain. it's not really whore it is hawarul ain 
just to to try to explain it to you with my limited English what is the thing inside your eye which is very white and then in the middle you have the dark spot which can be blue can be brown the white thing what they call it in English anybody can help me what do you call that thing in your eye you have a white the major part of your eye is white I don't know really what they call it in English, you know, so you guys need to help me. Yeah, the eye in the eye, like, you know, in your eye, you have the one in the middle. Let me let me go. Uh, let me get a, an image. Hold on. Uh, excuse my limited English. Sorry, I never I mean, spoke of uh, a body part like this before. Uh, so. All right. This one is good. It's not real, but it does the job. You see here, there is this white area. That is what they are talking about. They are not talking about the, the, the women with big eyes as, you know, it's not really about big eyes. What the guys? They are talking about how white they are. They are white like that. However, they are even more whiter, even though they are called by that, but because simply they are so white, they are called Hawarul Ain, not Hurul Ain. Even the pronunciation, the Muslim, they say it wrong. So that area is what they are talking about they have nothing to do with the eye it have nothing to do with how big their eyes it is about how white they are this is why muhammad is saying they will be transparent why because even if you take an eye of an animal i don't want to say human being don't do that uh, uh, let us say you have an eye of a cow etc this eye which is very white but still you can see the nerves you can see through you can see the veins you can see the blood actually even your eyes you can see it you know if you if you zoom in uh, especially when you are tired or etc you have a pressure you can see uh, the veins in your in your eye let us see here um, All right, so the area around the eye is what they are talking about. And if you zoom more, you will notice that you will see a little bit of uh, 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 vein of blood, etc. So Muhammad is promising them, look how white they will be. They will be even whiter than the hawar of al ain, the whitening of the of the eye. Ain in Arabic mean eye. Ain can be uh, like a spring of water. And can be an eye of a person, all right. Uh, so, and that fit exactly the way I'm explaining it to you with what we saw in this hadith here, that you are going to have a woman who you can see the marrows of their bones. Why? Because they have eyes, or they, they have a skin, they have a body, who is white like. Hawarul Ain, the whitening of the eye, or the white space of the eye. And those women, they are transparent. So we can see even all the way through their bones, which means they are not only white the same as the whitening of the eye, they are going to be a lot more white to the point we can see through. And that makes sense, right? Because what the point of seeing the marrow of the women? I mean, what what is that is about? Who who is going to enjoy such a such a scene? It's disgusting.
imagine you have around you in your room uh, like 1,000 pictures of x-ray but in this scenario you will have 72 women they walk and you can see see through their bones but what Muhammad is doing he is exaggerating with his lies not only his lying he exaggerate with it so he can assure them that they are not just women the kind you see here not only they are white because you might find some white women between the Arab actually even Muhammad he used to call Aisha al humayra what does that mean what al humayra humayra supposedly is someone who have a light skin and have a red hair because her skin is white you know she have uh, like her skin will be it will turn red and her hair is red otherwise Muslim need to explain to us why he call her Humaira Humaira can be can be used as two meaning either insulting someone call him a little donkey for a female or a red head person let us find the hadith <clears throat> You see here, the Muslim didn't translate even the word because I think the translators in Egypt do not know what Humaira mean. <laughs> Look at this. Do you see the word Humaira or Humaira? <laughs> what Humaira? This is Aisha. We are talking about Aisha. Why he's calling Aisha Humaira? He's he's saying to her red head. And that explain why Muhammad, he have a special in, like a, a, a de sexual desire for this is lit this little girl. She was whiter than the rest, and looked like she was having some kind of a blonde hair. Otherwise, I don't see any reasons to be called such a name. Do we have any Abdul around? We are out of the Abdul. No Abdul, no more. All right, guys. This is what supposedly will be a video of 15 minutes. I mean, you guys, what you did to me? I have to go and do buy some stuff. Like, look at the time now. Um, it's a noon time. Um, I said to myself. I will I will I will finish my tea talking to you for 15 minutes and I will go. Do you see what happened? This has happened even though there's not even one of you is a transparent woman. So what will happen if those who they are listening we can find some transparent women? I will stay forever here. Please, brothers, sisters, Try to find us next time some transparent women to join us so I can explain to you better. They can open the camera and we can show you what the transparent women mean. So if you know any transparent women, friend, please let them come to us so we can use them as a study material. And you know, like uh, if we ask Zachar Naik about the transparent, he will say, Brother Sister, all of us, we like transparent things. As an example, we heard many people say we like to have a transparent government, transparent president, transparent minister. Finally, brother, you are going to have a transparent woman. Isn't it so beautiful? She cannot hide the falafel from you. She cannot eat even the boogers. Even the boogers in her nose, you can see it. Praise be to Allah. Thank you very much. I mean, that's so beautiful. We need a transparent woman. And let us hope that soon we will have in the market of the pimp Muhammad transparent women around. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you did not yet. And don't forget to unsubscribe if you don't like what you hear. Because I am not really interested of having people to come here unless they are interested. So thank you very much. And may the Lord bless you all and see you soon 
again. God bless.